Second opinion games. Hover Strike. I played this game once at a neighbor's house back in 96, and I've been waiting a long time to check this one out. But first, I have to open mine. So this here is my sealed Hover Strike game. Uh, it is factory sealed and even has the stickers on it from when it was discounted way, way, way down. I am going to tear it open for you guys' viewing pleasure to see what's inside a factory sealed game. Also, most of those games behind it are factory sealed as well. I'm probably going to end up tearing all those open just to check out for you guys. Behind the box there is the instruction manual and some cards here. Ooh, free games for the Jaguar. Pretty neat. Just mail it in. Maybe they'll send you some right now. And that's for the official Jaguar book. It's just off screen there, but I have it already. So I guess I don't need that. Look, it's even folded straight out of the box. How great. This manual, by the way, is pretty hefty in weight and size. It's pretty nice. Too bad there's no colors in it. And the overlay. Pretty cool to have, but not really necessary for this game. And the game itself. Pretty neat. Has a nice handle on it. Nice cover. No marks. And someone's used tissue. Great. That's that. Rockets. Bit of a mixed bag. The ground has some textures, and it looks like the enemies have some thought put into them. At first glance, it's ugly, but after a while starts to feel good. I like the use of the radar in this game. You can tell enemies from the objectives. And the red dots on the screen can be fuel, energy, or even a missile refill. And the radar is a must-have, because Poppin' here is about the worst on the entire Jaguar lineup. And that's pretty bad. Presentation. A bit bare bones from the start, but it's not long before you see the developers really took their time here. Before each mission, they explain the objective very thoroughly, and there's even a picture so you know what you're looking for. Other Jaguar games really fall short in this department, so I'm happy to see they took their time here. Also, there's your dropship. At the beginning of each level, it drops you off, and at the end of the level, it picks you up. If you happen to get a game over, you get to see a cool cutscene where your ship gets blown out of the sky. And it was really neat the first time I saw it. Overall, I think the presentation here is pretty good. Sun. In this department, the critics are pretty much on point. The music is quiet to the point where I played through three or four missions before I even noticed it was there. That's kind of on the bad side. However, the synthesized speech here is really good. It sounds very clear. The rest of the effects are just bland. They're just generic Jaguar sounds. And that's also pretty bad. External monitor. Don't play. First thing you notice here is the low frame rate. I even felt motion sick the first time I played it. The C button here moves you and accelerates you. The B button fires and the A button breaks. And that's the most important part here, the break. Once you get the hang of it, it starts to even feel good. And use the overlay. One button can lock on targets, another button to launch missiles. It starts to feel fun when you get the hang of it. Just watch out for those night missions, though. You can only see about five feet in front of your ship. However, it is very satisfying when you beat these. Bosses.
No, another Dragwire game with no bosses. But I'll forgive them for making about 30 plus levels of a fun game. Once you get the hang of the controls, that is. And give it a chance. You will be rewarded with one of the best games on the Jaguar. Heck, it's even two players. Something that a lot of the Jaguar games don't have. One person can steer and the other person can shoot. Overall, I love this game, but that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching.